friends. Oh, uh, friends too? Oh. Little bit of She came. This one I speak. Why is Tushy dead? Why is Tushy dead? Just like that. I am from Haiti, but now I am living in Europe, so since 1999. I speak French and I speak Fabiamento. The local language is Fabiamento. Yeah? Yeah, Fabiamento and Dutch. Fabiamento is the mixed language, okay? Yeah, I know. And Fabiamento has Portuguese, English, Hollandese, Spanish, Africa. Hollandese is the official language of the four. But in high, in the high school, they speak English and Spanish. But that people from Philosophy speak small language. They speak for Aruba. Tempo they before. What about on like St. Martin and Seva and St. Eustatius? Do they also speak Papiamento? No. I like Aruba. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't yeah, know, but like, like you said, Curacao has the most to see. Yes, because we have yeah, the Yeah, yeah, you said that. Yeah, and they yeah. have all... Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, and Aruba. they have all the land. In Aruba, it's not so many places to see. Oh, wow. Bridge, and this one, one, See the Peter my church. Yeah, Peter my church, yes, alright. Yeah, we were walking there. Tuesday you will go to Bonaire. Yeah. If yeah. you want to go to Bonaire, you know how many minutes? Yeah, like 30. 15 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because on the ticket it says 30. Yeah, we to Aruba by SLR. It's a 15 minutes. I don't know which fly, which fly you have. Oh, in, in Seoul air. Well, it's 15 minutes. <laughs> when you come back? In the evening. So you yeah, yeah, yeah. One day. Yeah, 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 well, yeah and we're, we're coming back yeah, to Curacao at 8 o'clock. We'll be back on the I, Curacao. I, I, I will be to pick you up, okay? Oh, you can pick us up all, uh, yeah, when yeah, we come yeah, back? Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. yeah. Maybe you have a discount. If you have delayed, you have the chance, you have to call me. Okay. okay, thanks. They told for us it's gonna take so long on the airport because on the... Because all the yeah. planes from the yeah, US. Yeah. To get a deeper insight into the real Curacao, I've arranged a tour with local photographer Caroline Kastendijk. Our first stop is the historic Fort Nassau. Built by the Dutch in 1797, the fort sits 223 feet above Schottegat Bay, overlooking the iconic Queen Juliana Bridge and the surrounding oil docks. In September of 1800, the island was taken by the English, and in 1804, the fort failed to prevent the bombardment of Willemstad by English troops. Then, in 1807, the fort's cannons opened fire for the first time at an English Navy squadron. The English once again took control of the island and renamed the fort Fort George after King George III. In 1816, the Dutch once again regained possession of the island and renamed the fort Fort Orania Nassau, which later became known simply as Fort Nassau. Ceremonial shots were fired from the fort's cannons every day at noon, but the tradition was eventually abolished. The last shot was fired on August 3, 1823, and it was a warning shot to ward off some French ships. The fort eventually lost its military function and now houses one of the island's finest restaurants. From Fort Nassau we make our way north to St. Willie Broadus, known by the locals as Williwood. lucky and see some. This entire area used to be a salt mine back in the colonial days. 
I mean something completely different in America. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> well, that is why it's so funny. When they think of something nice, they think, and then they make, uh, they make this nice. The paint is already getting off again. You know why that happens? The salt? Yes, the salt in the salt. stones because it's built from... Uh, we're living on a rock here and so they use the stones from the soil. You heard of this thing of William Rovers in church and it was built in the 1880s in a neo-Gothic style and it replaced an earlier church that was built in 1849. Have you been to the beach already? Well, we went in the Yantil. Oh, but that is not... Uh, that you can't compare that with the beaches here. The first part is me, where am I now? But you'll see. You now we get to this certain point. It's really, really beautiful. This is not a lake, but this is an open it has an opening to the sea. There was this whole pier here, but it's gone already. Destination. This is the whole ghost town. It used to be a hotel. I came here six years ago and it was still open. And then it. Oh, wow. look of at green. the color of the water. Oh, yeah, this is so beautiful. My daughter, once or twice, had oh, wow. a weekend camping stay over here. Oh wow! Isn't it? Wow! Yeah. Uh, the car here. Beach is empty. No one. No wonder this is not a beach that people go to. Oh wow! That's just like a rough water. Oh wow! This is another unplanned stop, but I'm glad we did stop here because we have another beautiful area. Santa Marta Bay but from the bottom we just saw it from above and now this is the bay from the bottom this is Land Cruz Klein Santa Marta Land Cruz is the Dutch word for plantation house and there are literally tons of these Land Cruises dotted all across the island some of them are museums but most of them like this one have been turned into businesses like hotels or restaurants I'm in the small town of Barber and it's not a very big town. It has only about 2,000 people and the reason I stopped here is because it's one of the last remaining traditional towns on the island. This area we're hiking through right now is known as Kofi Pastor and around here is supposed to be an 800 year old Kapok tree, the oldest tree on the island, but I guess it's a bit of a walk so we're just going to keep walking through these bushes until we find it. Oh wow! 
Yeah, that's so wow, huh? <laughs> oh, wow. wow. It's too big for the picture. There must be flowers because from the flowers you get the fruit. And K-pop is like, it's like a soft... This is the tree I was talking about. This is an 800 year old kapok tree. And it's the oldest tree on the Curacao. Dr. Stein. 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 Dr. St
Okay. I can't believe it, yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. expect no. this. Mm -hmm. Well, how is it? Good. Good. That was a great dinner. The restaurant looks a bit run down from the outside, but it's the food they serve that matters. So this just goes to show that sometimes the ugliest places serve the best food. And the best part is we only paid 60 guilders for all that food. I think that's about $30 US. That's just unbelievably cheap. I'm so glad we stopped here. I just love off the beaten path places like this. This is a real Curacao right here. Here we have the old guilders. I'm not surprised they changed them because these were too big for people to carry around and pay with. So they changed them to small guilders. There is more to do in the weekends here than people come here and they go and fish or sit here and relax. And I once did a wedding and this guy, he was from the uh, fire brigade in Holland and he really... They built the houses close to the street, yeah? Mm -hmm. so oh wow. This is my favorite church from the inside. I'll stop over there and you'll get out. This beautiful building is to be my favorite. Santa Fania Church. In Otrabant, it's called the Highly Park Church. Dutch. I think this is probably the most beautiful church on the whole island, at least in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, oh yes. This is quite an unusual site for the Caribbean. This beautiful building this is behind is the Omar bin al Khattab Mosque. Islam was first introduced to the Caribbean by West African slaves in the 18th century. But then in the 19th century there were also some Lebanese immigrants who came to the island and they sort of also brought the religion of Islam with them and today there are still a few Muslims living on the island. It's kind of funny that I was seeing my first mosque in the Caribbean instead of in the Middle East. But what an amazing place. Very interesting to see a different part of the Caribbean that many people don't realize it. That's a nice hidden gem of Willemstad.